leave that in there. <laughs> okay. I'm stretching. My smile on my face. <laughs> it looks painful. All right. What's up, CJ's Keto Kitchen family? This is CJ. And Sarah. It's a Wednesday, and that means it's time for another keto conversation. So let's get started. So we haven't done a conversation in, well, it's been a month. We, it seems like we're doing about one a month now where we actually sit down for the keto conversation segment and do a conversation. So it's been about a month and we're going to talk about a topic that um, that's pretty relevant because it's the, we're approaching the holiday season. Before you know it, it will be um various holidays coming up thanksgiving christmas and anything else that may be celebrated around this time of year i know there's a whole a lot of different holidays uh, that are celebrated and this topic we think is relevant for these this time of year so you can go ahead and introduce the topic because sure. you got all the notes sure and i'm just going to chime in with okay. a few words as so I think about it. we actually discussed this topic uh, more than three years ago but um, I thought it was very relevant um, now that we're, you know, some things are opening up. We're doing more things socially. And like CJ said, the holidays are coming very quickly. So the topic tonight is going to be keto social eating tips and tricks for both business and, you know, of course, personal. Sure. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And I have six different tips and tricks. All right, so what's the first one? Okay, so the first one is plan ahead. Now, I like this particular tip for a lot of discussions that we have because if you can plan ahead, it's always advisable, especially when you have some kind of dietary restriction. Sure, and uh, I'll just say that, I guess from a business perspective, it, you know, I, I actually work in a, a position where you have to, have to manage my calendar and so there's very few uh, social eating situations that I don't know are coming up. It's not a surprise. It's not a surprise. <laughs> now, every right. once in a while, somebody might say, hey, do you want to go out and go blah, 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 blah place? But, you know, even that's pretty few and far between, especially with, you know, what we're coming out of with COVID and everything. So most of the time I know when I'm going to be going out with a group of people in a business setting and right. I can that again I can plan ahead as Sarah mentioned right and you know in the day and age that we live in almost everything is googleable now that might not be a word but it made it up anyway <laughs> a lot of places even your ma and pa smaller businesses most places have their menu online mm -hmm. so even if something were to be sprung upon you like CJ said there's still a good possibility that you would have five or 10 minutes to go on and see what kind of foods they offer, maybe kind of get the wheels turning, think about how you might order something to fit the keto lifestyle, however you are particularly doing that in your keto lifestyle. Some people are, you know, uh, doing net carbs versus total carbs. Some people are following more of a keto carnivore lifestyle. But regardless of what you choose, it would give you an opportunity to maybe think ahead and know what you might want to eat when you get there. Yeah, and then, you know, in family situations, you know, most of the time you know you're going to be going to a family event, uh, a family gathering. And so you, you know, if... You might like, know what's going to be on the menu. Right, you, you might yeah. kind of have an idea. Right. Uh, and, and, and so, again, that's just something where you can plan. And sometimes the planning is just... In your brain or in your mind, running through what, what you're going to have, yeah. you know what you're going to have, and then I mean, I was just thinking as we we're talking. I actually did have a situation about a month ago where uh, I was up in Seattle, and I was supposed to go to. We were supposed to go to a very specific restaurant where uh, Bruce Lee, uh, the kung fu master, had eaten or used to eat. And he was a regular. Yeah, he was a regular, and that plan fell through. It didn't work out. 
So we ended up having to go to another place that was not planned. So I had not planned to go to this other place where we went. And so I tell you that story because sometimes when those types of situations come up, all you can do is the best that you can do. And so just keep that in mind. I mean, I'm not trying to give you an excuse to, to get out, but all you can do at sometimes is to look at the menu. And I mean, literally in this situation, we couldn't go to place A. We had to go to place B, which was two blocks away or a block away. And we were literally walking and we were, you know, doing all this on the fly. So sometimes you just have to, when you get there, look at the menu, do the best you can and move on. And we are going to discuss that a little bit later on too. Oh, sorry. That's okay. It, it deserves reiteration. So the second tip or point is try and stay in hotels with a hot breakfast option versus a continental breakfast. And there are quite a few places that do offer that. I know when we went to Florida, when we visited CJ's family in Georgia, our first stop was Florida. Mm -hmm. And we chose a hotel accommodation that offered a hot breakfast. And there are a lot of places that do that anymore. And the reason behind that for us personally is if you're going to stay somewhere and you're going to pay to stay in a hotel, finding one that offers a hot breakfast usually includes things like eggs, sausage, bacon, those yeah. kinds of things that are more in keeping with the ketogenic lifestyle than say like a muffin yeah. or a bagel or juice, you know, things that are more uh, geared towards a cold continental breakfast yeah. are generally carby, you know, fairly high glycemic index foods. Yeah, and even when we got stuck in Dallas or Euless, Texas for uh, a day, we were fortunate enough to be in a hotel that had a hot breakfast. And sure, it had all that other stuff, the orange juices, the muffins, it had all those things. And and our daughter didn't care about all those She things. loved the eggs. She, She's still talking about but, those eggs. <laughs> but but again, it, it's ideal if you if you're if you are booking accommodations as you travel to think about those things because uh, again you can well you can save a little bit of money although I'm pretty sure that's all factored into your room, room rate but a lot of times but, it's similar to some other accommodation that doesn't offer that so yeah it's definitely exactly something to so consider. that's just something to consider yeah. all right what do we got next so the third tip is remember you're in control and modifications are expected so um, sometimes if you are a certain personality type, it can be difficult to ask for what you would like in a customer service situation. But remember that there are a lot of people who have dietary restrictions nowadays. There's uh, people who don't eat gluten, there's mm -hmm. vegetarians and vegans. Everyone seems to have an allergy of some kind anymore, shellfish, nuts, whatever the case may be. So most of your establishments are not at all surprised that you might want a modification of some kind for your meal right right it's not that big of a deal and i've been places where you know we you know if you think about the modifications it's almost a, almost a different meal <laughs> so yeah and, and i really haven't been anywhere where they've like batted an eye no it has it never it's never like been a it problem was, it's never been a problem. You, you want that, really? You know, that's never happened. Yeah, it's so. never been a problem. And I guess if that did happen, then I probably would never go back to well, that Yeah, you would not patronize that establishment yeah. anymore. Because, <laughs> because ultimately, what you need to remember also is that you're paying for this. And right. that you're the paying customer. Exactly. And so, uh, again, you shouldn't feel shy or... or you know, like... You, like you're putting like them you're out. Putting them it, out. Is, you're, it is generally a customer yeah, service. You're, you're, they're there... To serve you right and if that's what if you have different dietary restrictions keto gluten whatever it is then that's what you need to ask for to get what you need uh, and then know about your business after that and we have actually found places where we have been and we talk about what we're doing and why we need it people some of our servers will say oh are you keto oh i do keto too yes. or my mom does keto or my next door neighbor and so it can be a segue into meeting other people who practice yeah. the same lifestyle or just having something to talk about. So it can be kind of fun in that way. Yeah, and then I remember a story back in the old days, old days of keto, when we first kind of started four or five years ago. We're, we're keto geriatric yeah, now. We're keto, keto geezers. <laughs> and uh, I remember we went to a Burger King. We were doing the order for a bunless Whopper or something. And the lady said, oh, okay, the low-carb button. 
that was again that, <laughs> that was, was like back, five years ago. That was back in the yeah. old days of keto. <laughs> so anyway, it's not that big of a deal to make yeah. modifications. And as Sarah said, a lot of times when you start doing it, people will know exactly what you're trying to do, and yeah. it's no big deal. Yeah. All right. So the next point is you can just wait to eat or eat ahead of time. So realistically, unless you're on an episode of Alone or Survivor, you are not hunting for your food and or going to miss a meal if you don't forage for something. So if you know you're going to be in a social situation, whether it's at you know Aunt Lucy's house or at your office, there's always going to be another opportunity for you to eat when you're done or to eat before you go to said occasion. Yeah. Yeah, and I know for some of you that's going to feel weird. Uh, I get it. Uh, you know, in the social situations I go to for, for I guess, for business, uh, most of the people I eat with, they know how I eat. However, there have been times when I go somewhere and they don't, and that's not a big deal either. And if you just feel like you have to be eating something while everybody else is eating, so you can, I guess, it's just like people who fast, like, you know, Sarah fasts, and she will not, she might be fasting, but everybody else is eating, uh, and that's not a big deal for some people. Right. However, for some people, I know it is a big it deal. It is. And so, if you're one of those people where it's a big deal that you're not eating where everybody else is, and, and Sarah's point is valid, then you probably just need to get something, I don't know, salad, something that you, that's light, uh, if that's what you need to do to be able to stay on track for keto. Well, and I find too, you know, like CJ mentioned in my circumstances, if I happen to be fasting and I still am in a social situation, be it whether it's with my family or somewhere else, sometimes just having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or grabbing a bottled water or something and you're sitting down yeah. with the people and you're still engaging in conversation, a lot of times they don't even, they aren't even noticing yeah, they, if you're eating they're or not. They're not even paying because they're, yeah, you they're, know, they're, they're, they're eating they're or whatever. Food their, yeah. They're shoveling food in their, pla <laughs> so, in their face and they don't even know that you're yeah. not even eating. So you can, you could a lot of times just drink if, you yeah. know, if it comes down to that. So yeah. that's another thing. Then the alternate to that would be bring your own food or a dish that you have made, which has worked well for us in the past in social situations, especially family occasions. Yeah. So again, these holiday events are coming up. Uh, whatever the holiday is and this is a good strategy for those mm -hmm. events and again that and i've said this over and over for years that's one of the reasons we do recipes is to give you options so you don't have to feel deprived so you can do things and we try to explain things in a way where you can make it not and we just have us yeah we have so many recipes of recreating dishes that are similar to maybe some of your holiday yeah. favorites but are keeping with the low carb lifestyle. Yeah. And a lot of times people will ask me to bring a low carb dish or dessert, even if there's going to be lots of high carb food there yeah. because they still want it, even if they're yeah. not practicing and that's know. And that's the thing you're gonna find is, so you take a dish, then you wanna make, make sure you get some get of first, that dish. Be first in line. <laughs> because a lot of times the carbies, as I like to call it, will yes. just, they will scarf your food down. Yes. Uh, before you even get a chance, so uh, I we just you've been warned, and but it's a good strategy, especially in family, you know, family events. But even in you know, and if if you work in an office where they have potlucks now, like where I work, uh, they're still not even talking about when we're going to come back all together. But even if we do a potluck in an office setting or a church setting, again, you can bring a keto dish that yeah. you will know you'll like. But I'm telling you you'll be lucky to get any of it. Yep. Once, so you better be first in once line. Once the carbies get a taste of it, <laughs> you'll be lucky to get it. Because they won't believe that it's sugar-free, good yep. for you, whatever yep. the case may yep. be. Yep. Yep. For so. sure. That has happened multiple times in previous family gatherings where there'll be store-bought cakes or cookies or other things that are super fancy and all kinds of things and the sugar-free dessert will get rapidly consumed and yep. that stuff will need to be taken home because yep. it just gets eaten yep. so all right well so the last one is what you talked about a little bit earlier and that is pick the lesser of two evils <laughs> so say you are confronted with a situation where you do need to eat or you feel like eating or whatever the case may be pick the lesser of two evils so say you're faced with a buffet tray or a menu choose something that is the lowest of 
of the bad, I guess, using bad. So for instance, like a vegetable tray. Well, maybe it has ranch with it and maybe you don't know yeah. the origins of the ranch yeah, dressing. Exactly. But it's still going to be better than eating a piece of cake or a donut or something else. You're still better off with that ranch even if it has a little bit of sugar in it and eating the vegetables with it than you would be, you know. Yeah, cuz I mean, keep in mind so keto is forgive is forgiving. We're not telling you that you need to be doing this all the time. But there are going to be situations that you get into where the all you can do is the best you can do. Right. And as Sarah said, take the, the lesser. lesser of the two evils. And okay. so, uh, but you know what, when you do that, your head's not going to explode. You know, you're not going to blow up and, you know, be back at, you know, whatever you no. lost. It's, it's just, and if you do gain some weight, it'll be just water. And likewise, and, don't use it as an excuse to go off the rails. Well, yeah, oh, but, I had some ranch on my veggies, so yes, now I'm going to But I can't cake. tell you how many times, <laughs> even in, in, in work situations, I can tell you of, of um, an event that I used to go to uh, pre-COVID uh, where uh, the vendors all would you know, have a big buffet-style dinner and you know, nobody, or a meal, a social meal, and nobody was thinking about keto or anybody else. It was just food and you you wanted it, you ate. And I can't tell you how many times, like Sarah gave the example about the dressing, where I probably ate some ranch dressing. I didn't go to the back and say, hey, can I see the bottle? And, you know, tell me how much. What's in your vinaigrette? Right? I mean, you could I, if you want. But. Yeah, you know, because sometimes, again, you can, we're talking about real life, and sometimes you can only do the best you can do. Right. And you do it, you you do what you gotta do, and you move on to the next thing. We're just telling you don't do that all the time, if you don't have to, but you do what you gotta do, and you move on. Right. So, those were the six, is that right? Six. Six uh, temp tips. Yep. Those were the six tips for uh, eating out or keto business and thank social you. eating. Thank you. Yeah. You had the notes. So, <laughs> thank you. So we hope that you that this is relevant for someone in our audience. Um, and if it is, please let us know that. And if you've got some other tips or strategies you've used uh, in your own life. We'd like to hear about that in the comments as well. And if you hit the like button, that will bring it forward in some of YouTube's suggestions so that if other people are looking for this type of topic, they would find it yeah. more easily. Yeah, yeah. Hitting the like button, actually, you know, actually there is a purpose behind it and it, it does help uh, spread the word about, uh, this the, topic. about this topic. And, and keto in general. And keto in general. You yeah. know, there's all kinds mm -hmm. of people that say, oh, I just discovered your channel. Well, we've been on YouTube for, I don't know, what, four or five years, and there's people every day saying they just discovered our channel, and so... And it was probably through some of these other means, people yes. liking videos yes. and that kind of thing, then they're suggested. Yes. So if you're new here, this is our Keto Conversation segment. We do these on Wednesday nights. Uh, some, some Wednesdays we do food unboxing, sometimes we do grocery hauls, sometimes we do what we eat videos. But once a month, we do try to sit down and actually talk about a relevant keto topic. And so if you're interested in this kind of content, hit the um, subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That's the only way you'll know we uh, put out videos. And we appreciate you being here, and we hope that you have a great rest of the week. There'll be more videos at the end of this video if you want to stick around. More topics. And We've got lots see of other keto conversations, yeah. uh, topics uh, that might be of interest to you. All right, have a great, have a great rest of the week, and we'll talk at you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Peace. Peace.